I will say, generally speaking, we would agree with your view of Islam. Um, and I've noticed, as I said to you in the email, that you, you and I think your dad as well, mm -hmm. are picking up on some of these apostate actions of uh, Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we again, we're not people who kiss up to to any leader. We're all about truth, and so when we talk about what the Pope is doing, uh, we say that what the Pope is doing is wrong, and we put everyone else under the same standard. Um, now, when I write articles about Constantine, or when I write articles about um, church history, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm writing it based on what the primary source accounts tell us, what, what are the historical documents tell us. Um, what I didn't like, though, is how you you got my article and you were like, "Oh, Vatican agent, Vatican spy. He must be a Catholic. Um, I, I don't know if he's truly a believer." And it was really it was like a slanderous accusation because just because I'm stating an historical opinion doesn't make me all of a sudden uh, uh, a false believer or a Vatican Jesuit uh, or anything like that. But uh, you, were, you were implying in your show that I was some sort of a, a Jesuit or some sort of a Vatican agent or I sold out or something like that. Um, I'm simply basing it on primary source accounts, historical primary source. No, I don't know if I called you a, a Jesuit spy or something like that. Inquisition, you know, Believe, is it in, you know, he believes in the Inquisition. He wants to do the Inquisition. Yeah, you did. I, I remember. Well, the I think my position just, and, and we'll talk about this on the show because I think it's important. Because I get emails from people questioning both you and your dad, uh, and uh, and of course, because when I get these emails and I've seen your website a number of different times, there are things that you're saying that I agree with. There are parts of history that I don't agree with, at least how you're representing them. Uh, however, I don't want to be unfair, don't want to be unfair, but, I, but people have a legitimate concern uh, about whether or not you and your dad are Catholic. You seem at some points to have Catholic leanings, you know, historic Catholic leanings, and defending Rome through the Middle Ages, I mean, in, in terms of opposing Islam, I think we would all agree. From the Protestant view, however, the, the persecutions of Rome uh, against Bible believers are... Which Bible believers? Well, against the uh, Waldenses, against the Huguenots, yeah, well, you went out of your way to say that the Cathars were Christians, and that is an absolute fallacy. The Cathars were not Christians. The Cathars were heretics, who uh, whose theology actually came from the, from Persia, and didn't come from the apostles, didn't come from Jesus, came from Persia, from some guy named Manny. And I know you're going to say that they weren't Manichaeans and all that, but when you read the actual documentation on who these people were not only that but when you actually read their own writings i have cathar literature that i can quote from you that is blatantly uh, heretical and for example there's a book that the cathars wrote called on the principle of evil and let me just read it says it says right here i can read it to you it says let him grasp the fact that there is another god and lord aside from the true God and Lord. They are many gods and lords. Now, you wouldn't agree with that, would you? Well, it would, I, would want to, I would want to hear the full context. Of well, so would you say that there is another God and Lord aside from the true because God and Lord? In the scripture, Paul says in the scripture, there are gods many and lords many. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, please, please stop, stop. Would you say, let him grasp that the fact that there is another God that and Lord aside from the true God and Lord? There are many gods and lords and powers opposed to the true God and his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, and it says, it is perfectly clear from scriptures... Hold, hold on, stop, 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 stop. 
It says here, it is perfectly clear from scriptures that the God and Lord who is the creator of the world is different from him to whom the blessed come in their spirits. He's, the, our opponents, the Catholics, say that according to Genesis, the Lord is the creator of the visible things of this world. But I say that the creator of the visible things of this world is not the true God. Would you say that the creator of the visible things of this world is not the true God? Oh, now you're changing it. Before you were defending it, now you're saying this was the Gnosticism. Well, this is Cathar literature from the Middle Ages. All right, now, let me ask you this. Where are you getting this literature from? I'm getting it uh, from the historian by the name of Edward Peters, and Edward Peters has documented all these sources in a book that he uh, compiled. He didn't really write it. It's simply sources that he compiled. It's called Heresy and Authority in, in Medieval Europe. You can read it yourself. And Edward Peters is one of the most uh, prominent scholars on medieval religion, religion in the Middle Ages. Is he Catholic? What does it matter? So if he's Catholic, automatically that means it's false. Hold on, so if he's Protestant, I can say it automatically means it's false. It doesn't automatically mean it's false, but it means that it's going to be bent in the direction of Rome. Well, that's what you're implying, though. But you, but you would have to prove that. Uh, Edward Peters is a very objective person if you've read anything from him. And I've read a good amount of information from him. Um, I have a number of his books. You can look him up yourself. Well, I mean, of course, and Theodore, we're going to get it. This is what we're, <laughs> we're going to be talking about on the radio program. So this is kind of, this, this is good. It gives me some insight into it. Uh, the other side of this, well, uh, you know, I'll save that for the show. Um, okay. Uh, now, our... Do you believe or do you accept that the Cathars and the Albigenses are essentially the same? Yes, they are, no doubt. Okay. Because the Albigensian because the Albigensians were simply Cathars who lived in what is in France is called Albi. That's why they that's why they're called Albigensian. And you do realize that when the Albigensian, or when the Cathar heresy first came into France in the uh, 10th century, that they were doing all kinds of uh, horrific uh, rituals. For example, they were burning children and using the ashes to make a Eucharistic hosts, consecrating them and then eating them. And this was one of the reasons why the Cathars were inquisited in the beginning, because they were committing such crimes. Uh, they did not come from the apostles, again. And in your documentary, you say that uh, Constantine killed more Christians than when he was pagan and all. Excuse me, what documentation do you have to prove that he killed Christians? Well, I don't know that I said that Constantine killed Christians. Yes, you did. In your documentary, Light and Darkness or whatever. The edict in A Lamp in the Dark, he put forth the edict against heresies. Yeah, and you said that there were Christians who were killed, and you had the little reenactment of someone getting a, a, a sword on the back of their neck and all that. Come on, where did you get the primary source documents for that? Well, using the powers, the temporal powers of Rome to persecute or punish those who were guilty of heresy, that is something that began with Constantine. But, but, but where did you get the primary source accounts to show that he killed Christians? Well, the, uh, it, would be, it would begin with his edict against heretics. I mean, that's the primary source account. Uh, what was the punishment that he put forth in that document? Hold on a second. I'm asking, what, you're not answering the question, though. What primary source accounts do you have? It's the edict against heretics. It's a well-known document. Yeah, I, I actually have it right in front of me, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, Understand now, by this present status, ye Novatians, Valentinians, Marcionites, Polians, and Cataphrygians. These are the only sects that the document mentions. Do you know what these people believed in? Um, no. You don't know. So how could you say that they were Christians when you don't even know what they believed in? We do, though. You have only accusations from Catholic resources against Well, I'm simply... I'm, You're using Catholic... I'm simply relying on the documentation that we have. The Catholic Church... Oh, there you go again. Centuries. <laughs> see, false okay. False accusations, and every How do you know they're false? How do you know they're false? Well, I, I, I believe... You believe. Protestant version of history. I do not believe Rome's version of history. Okay, that's... 
that means absolutely nothing, but I want to know how do you know that it's full? Let's be objective about it. Because we have documentation from people who actually lived in the time when these heretics existed. Okay, and do you have eyewitnesses who knew them? J hold on. This is just like, for example, if I wanted to um, uh, expose Islam, right? And someone came up to me and said, Oh, do you know someone who lived in the time of Islam? Actually, we do. We have Christian documentation from the time that Islam first came. John of Damascus, um, uh, we have a Theodore Abukura, we have John the Deacon, we have many different people who lived in the time when Islam first arrived, right? We read their books, we say, you know what, these people have good points, we believe them. Because we accept their honesty. Now, when we look at the documentation for the but you apparently don't even know what they believed in, so I don't know how you can say that they're false, but when you look at the documentation from St. Ambrose, from, uh, um, for example, Irenaeus of Leon, who actually was a student of St. Polycarp. Polycarp was a student of St. John, okay? So Irenaeus is a man who is deeply respected in uh, church history by both Protestant and Catholic historians. Well, now you're going to Irenaeus, who lived in the second century. Yeah, and he talked about the Valentinians. Uh huh. No, it wasn't 313. It was quite earlier than that. But Irenaeus. is Constantine's edict of Milan. Okay. Christianity. Okay. So, your point? Okay. Well, my point is you're talking about the groups. I mean, you're skipping over hundreds of years of history here going to Irenaeus. Well, we can talk about. Hold on, but we can talk about what St. Ambrose said about them as well. See, I'm taking from de multiple sources, St. Ambrose, and I'm taking from St. Irenaeus of Leon. So Ambrose lived in the time of Theodosius, so that was after Constantine. But they said the same exact things about the Valentinians. So still, your argument isn't really valid. Um, but you don't even know what they believed in, so I don't see how... Hold on, hold on a second. Your, your Ambrose here, uh, who died in 397 AD, okay, Ambrose So. And your point? Well, let's look at what uh, evangelicals believed in the in the 1920s and 30s. Why 1920s? We're talking about Constantine here in church history, and you want to talk about the 1920s? I mean, I don't know how you jumped from one millennia to the next. Less than a hundred years later, you have evangelicals who are preaching things like gay marriage and abortion and partial. Birth. Oh, listen, listen! You're going way off. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're way off. No, no, stop, stop. You're going way off. We're talking about... Let's stick to the subject here. Let's stick to the subject here. We're talking about the Valentinians here. We're not talking about gay marriage. We're talking about the Valentinians. You apparently... You, by your own admission... By your own admission, you don't even know what they believed in. So I don't see what the, the, the determining factor in your own mind is to say that they were believers in Jesus. Because they weren't. They believed that Christ did not come in the flesh... That is blatantly antichrist, as Saint John says. Now, the other, the other groups, okay. So where, where do we mention? We mention we say Valentinians were Christians, and Constantine killed them. When do we say that? Well, you you brought up the edict. The reason why I'm bringing this up is you brought up the edict that Constantine made against the heretical sects. I read you the edict, and I said, Novatians, Valentinians, Marcionites, Paulians, and Cataphrygians. Hold on, hold on, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what the edict says. It doesn't say Christians. Hold on, let me finish. This is the point that we made in the film. In the New Testament, there is no admonition to punish by law people for heresy. In other words, to take a stick and beat them or put them in jail or anything like that. Uh, that's not a church. This is something that began with Constantine to punish them according to the powers of the state for what they believe. That's the point that we make in our community. Maybe you said very clearly. What the beliefs were. You said very clearly. Don't play the game. You said very clearly. That they were Christians. In the film. That they were Christians who were killed by Constantine. Now you're changing it and saying that you're against the politics of Constantine. No, 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 no. You said that they, that this edict that Constantine made, that Constantine went out and he brought his soldiers and got Bible-believing Christians and all that stuff, and you you said that Constantine had them executed. That is what you said in that documentary. I know very well because I watched it. Okay, and. 
I'm telling you right now that historically, it's absolutely absent of any primary source evidence. I'm being very objective about this. And I'm telling you right now that historically, it's absolutely absent of any primary source evidence. I'm being very objective about this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even doing a Catholic leaning. I'm not even doing a Protestant leaning. There are Protestant historians who will agree with me. James White is one of them. Okay, uh, uh, and I watched your debate with James White, and I enjoyed watching him kind of uh, refute everything you were saying. That was enjoyable. But uh, you have other historians like Alvin Schmidt who would also agree with me about what I'm saying. And he's, a, he's a Lutheran. See, it's not a Protestant leaning. It's not a Catholic leaning. It's an objective leaning, and it's based on primary source accounts, my friend. And when you look at the primary source accounts, when you look at the edict that you brought up with me, you said it was a very known document. Okay, I brought it up with you. I mentioned uh, five sects. Five sects. You don't even know what they believed in. You don't even know what they believed in. Why not? Why didn't you? That's that's historically, but that's historically uh, not 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 even ethical. You should be fair to the historical accounts and say what this edict says. You should you you, you could have at least quoted it, but you didn't. I mean, that's deceptive, in my opinion. It's manipulating the evidence. We are going over the, the progression the progression of uh, church history and how things unfolded and how the power was channeled to Rome. But how could you say that the power is channeled to Rome when you have church fathers uh, hundreds of years before Constantine already declaring the primacy of Rome? Well, I, I question whether they're declaring the primacy of Rome. The Tertullian is in his in his her, in his edict on heretics. You're relying upon Catholic history. No, I'm not. I'm, at, I'm relying on church fathers that existed before Constantine, and these same church fathers. No, no, no. You, you, you really you can't even prove that. Okay. Of course we can. No, you can't. Back and we can look. I mean, just look at their uh, the uh, oh, there's a great book. Oh, what is it? Antichrist exposed by. Oh wow. Donald that sounds really historically objective. Antichrist exposed. Um, but my whole point is when you... The Cathars... Here's the thing, Theodore. If you read Antichrist Exposed by Dr. Ronald Cook, the Puritan and Pilgrim view of Antichrist, he goes over a lot of the historic information from these early groups and what they believed and how their beliefs were often distorted by Rome deliberately. Rome would deliberately take things that they said quote them out of context, and then accuse them of all these sort of horrible things. Accuse them of immoral acts and witchcraft and all sort of kind of stuff, which they were not guilty of. And you even had other Catholic priests who would, in their writings, admit that there were lies that were being told about these groups to justify the persecution of them, to justify the slaughter and the mass murder and all this other kind of stuff. Mass murder of who, exactly? What's that? Mass murder of who? Well, in particular, the Albigensian Crusade. Yes, I know a lot about the Albigensian Crusade. In fact, there's an excellent book about the Albigensian Crusade. Um, unlike what you're doing, I actually quote primary source accounts. Um, I, I, no, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. You quote sources from Puritans. You quote sources from Puritans who lived in the 16th century who did not live in the 13th century. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me. Could you please tell me the date when the Albigensian Crusade took place? You're not... He keeps going. Could you please give me the date when the Albigensian Crusade took place? When did the Albigensian Crusade take place? No, it be it belong it began in 1204. Could you please tell me when it ended? No, but my information, in the history that I have, is that there were a series of debates uh, had by Dominic Goodsman, that yes, who was the founder of the Dominicans, who became the leaders of the Inquisition, uh, and Goodsman had a series of debates with the people of Albi. Right, you're talking about the Inquisition. But you're talking about the, the preaching that St. Dominic did and other people like him, like Peter Castanel, um, who went into places in southern France and in central Italy. But you're not talking about the actual war. The war began in 1204, and it ended in 1224. You're bringing up, you're relying solely, 
solely on uh, Albigensian, uh, sorry, on Puritan uh, opinions that came out way after the 13th century. And so if you want to bring up some Puritan guy, well, that's fine, but I would like to bring up things based on the primary source evidence that actually was written by Pete. Hold on. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that question. Okay. I'm... I'm asking you for primary, so you haven't provided anything but Puritan writers. So, I mean, uh, you're also, you're not exempt from bringing up primary sources, my friend. But uh, I actually brought up a, 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 um, a Cathar piece of literature from you, called On the Principle of Evil, and you still can't, uh, uh, I mean, there's nothing Christian about it. It says that, the, that there's two different creators. The creator in Genesis is different from the one in the New Testament. Um, that, that actually, and, and if you... Ex excuse me, but that's what the Cathars wrote. That's what the Cathars wrote. That's what the Cathars wrote. But when you look at what the Catholic, when you when you look at what the other primary source accounts say about the Cathars, my friend, um, they actually go in accordance with what the Cathars themselves said. Now they are prominent modern historians who would agree with me, but um, I'm going to focus on the primary source accounts. And there's a great primary source. Have you ever heard of a guy named? Uh, his name is Pierre uh, of Leval de Sarnay. Have you ever heard of him? No. Okay, that's a primary source account, and he was present in the Albigensian Crusade. He, he of the I just told you, he was present in the Albigensian Crusade. He was present in the Albigensian. In what's that? No, he was not an Albigensian. He was a military chaplain who was present in the Albigensian Crusade. Now, of course, you're going to say, well, that means you can't believe him. But th that doesn't mean anything. It's like me saying, listen, um, uh, 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 Chris, I can't believe anything you say about Protestant history because you're a Protestant and you're leaning on the Protestant side, so I'm not going to believe anything you say. That's the same mindset that you have toward Pierre. But you haven't even looked at what Pierre said. Uh -huh. to realize one thing, and that is that when it comes to church history, you have two versions of church history. You have the Protestant version of church history, and you have the Catholic version of church, church history. There's no question. You have two versions of it. And at a certain point, you have to decide which one you believe. Uh, I believe there are parts of both of them that are true, uh, they're, they're based in truth to some extent, but you have to decide who are you going to trust. And if you decide you're going to trust the Roman Catholic historians, they just have a long history of bending and twisting information. I'm, I'm simply trusting people who lived in that time period. Now, you talked about the edict, and you said that it's a very well-known document, and that's true. And I quoted well, you the document. You can't even tell me what these sects believed in. But you you can't even tell me what the sects believe in. How could you make the affirmation that Constantine killed Christians when you can't even tell me what these five sects believed in? Okay, well, it doesn't matter what they believe. Yes, it does, because you said they were Christians. That's a huge accusation. No, no, no. You said Constantine killed Christians. I remember very well, Mr. Pinto. And you said that Constantine killed Christians and he put this reenactment of some Roman soldier with a sword. You know it's very true, Chris. I don't have to quote it. I watched it. You know it. Anyone... Stop. Anyone can watch your documentary and know exactly what you were saying. In fact, you had other Protestant pastors on that documentary saying, oh, that their names were, were uh, uh, slandered and, and, all, and they were killed and their books were burned and all this yes, stuff. because that's, that is the Protestant version of history. Yeah, and it's, yeah, but you know what? It's not based on primary source accounts. It's based on what Puritans said in the 1500s. Trusted by Protestant historians. You Catholic. you do realize that there are Protestant historians who would disagree with you. What's that? You do realize that there's Protestant historians, not pastors, because you brought reverends and pastors over. But I, I will tell you right now, there's Protestant historians like Alvin Schmidt, who's a Lutheran, or like Mr. James White, who will tell you, who's taught church, who will tell you that Constantine didn't go out killing Christians. And James White is as Calvinist as Calvinist can get. I did an inter interview with him not long ago. I 
know what James White believes about history. And James White comes from a very liberal education background that is dedicated to ecumenism. Now, while James White himself is not a liberal, he has undoubtedly been influenced by their version of history, which is ecumenically minded. It's designed to try to unify all the different yeah. Christian groups and this kind of thing. And that's what you get with that sort right. of history. But you know, I, but you said that Constantine killed did Christians. Did, did Constantine kill Christians? What's that? Did he kill Christians? Well, I, I don't say that Constantine killed Christians. Yes, you do. Okay. Um, uh, but you know what? I'll, I, will, I will have to go back and I'll look at that part of the film again and see exactly what we said. Because I'm normally very meticulous with what we say and with what we don't say. Uh, and we don't say anything other than what we can document. But as edict against heresies, that's a well-known part of history. Yeah, and I write to you the five sects, and you don't even know what they believe in. Well, we don't mention them in the film, Theodore, that's why. Why don't. not, though? That's historically unethical. You should at least read the quote and be fair. Right. We should read the quote and be fair. You should have. Put the quote in the film. And the, the, the quote, the quote but the quote would have clearly said that these people weren't Christians, though. What's that? The, the quote would have clearly said that these people weren't Christians. I mean, I mentioned just one, Valentinian. You couldn't even tell me what they believed in. Yet you say Constantine killed Christians in your documentary. You say the Cathars were Christians. You have no primary source accounts to back this up. I showed you two primary source accounts, one written by Cathar. What you're, what you're not taking into account is that when it comes to history, your version of history is not the only version. My version is not the only That's version. a very liberal way of thinking. That's like saying my truth is your truth kind of thing. about these things for over a thousand years. Uh, for you to just say, well, the Cathars were heretics and throw them all into a basket. I mean, that would be, you could just as easily say in our time that evangelicals are heretics because they all, they're all a bunch of baby killers because they've killed 50 million people through the abortion movement and they promote gay marriage. I'm talking, the, that, hold on, but the Cathars... Have you have you ever seen no I'm not have you ever seen what you're doing is you're saying you're saying that they were Christians we can't trust their the primary source accounts because Catholics wrote them yeah exactly what you're doing it's a very paranoid way of thinking but have you ever read about the council that the Cathars actually conducted we actually have that documented and we know for a fact that the Cathars had a pope. And they had bishops. So it wasn't as... It, and it wasn't... Excuse me, hold on. Please, please stop. Please. It wasn't as uncertain. It wasn't as, as certain as the evangelicals who believe in all kinds of different things. The Cathars had a pope. They had bishops. They actually had a, um, a standard theology that we can believe in. Hold on. But they actually had a standard theology that we can that they could believe in. So when I say Cathar, I'm talking about the theology that the Cathars accepted. And these Cathar, this uh, theology is documented uh, on the writings of the Cathars. That's documented by uh, Edward Peters. If you look at the count, the Cathar Council of Saint Felix de Cardamon in 1167, they have a pope named Pope Neguinta. Okay, Pope Niguinta was their pope for a number of years. So they had a council, they had popes, they had bishops, they actually had a theology. Okay, where did so, all this come from? what's that? Where are you getting all this history from? This, this Cathar council is documented uh, by, by certain manuscripts. Again, Edward Peters is the one who puts it in a compilation, and he has it translated into English. And, and he's a Catholic. I don't even know what religion he is, I never looked it up. But it's a very objective book. Now, of course, you're saying he's a Catholic, therefore we can't trust him. That's not, that would never even hold up in the court of law, my friend. That way of thinking would not even hold up in the court of law. We have to look at the primary source accounts, not your own biases, or not my own biases. But we have to look at the primary source accounts. Edward Peters, is, is he a modern historian? Yes, he is. Okay, well, he's not a primary source. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not talking about... I never said he was. I said he compiled the primary source. Hold on. I never said. I said he compiled the primary source account. I never said he was a primary source. Did you go and look up the primary source Yes, I did. Yourself? And I read them. I read all of them. He has... He, compi he doesn't write anything. He writes the introduction and all that. But he compiles all the documentation together in one big book so you can read all of them. It's kind of like 
When I, if I wanted to read about the Exodus, I wouldn't read what modern historians say about the Exodus. I would read Exodus. So if I want to know about the Albigensian Crusade, I'm going to read it by people who were actually there. Now, your way of thinking is this. Because Moses had a, uh, a conflict with the Pharaoh, we can't even trust what Moses says because he's biased. We should look at the Egyptian accounts. That's, that's your logic. No, no, I, I, would, I would trust Moses and I would not trust Pharaoh. See, you're doing it the other way. You're trusting Pharaoh and not Moses. That's, that's, that's a stretch, but go ahead. No, I mean, that, that, that's effectively what you're doing. No, I'm not. If you are, if, I mean, do you believe that the, the true gospel is taught by the Roman Catholic Church? I, I'm not even going to get into that. We're talking about what you said on the radio show about the Cathars. Because, because now you want to inquisit me. Now you're the inquisitor, no, Chris. Yes. Do you believe, what is this, an inquisition? If you cannot trust, if you cannot trust the source to accurately and faithfully represent the gospel, which is clearly written in the Bible, why would you trust them for anything else? Why Why would we trust even Josephus? Hold on, but why would we trust anybody in that? I mean, like, why would we trust CNN? Why would we trust uh, Sean Hannity? Everything Sean Hannity must, said must be false because he's Catholic. A million people. 50 million people. 50, what, what primary source documentation do you have of that? Especially now. Hold on. You said that the Catholic Church killed 50 million people. Where is the primary source documentation for that? That's not a, that's not a primary source. Well, it's documented by a modern historian. Modern? No, no, no. I want primary source accounts, my friend. Yes, just like your just like your Edward Peters. Um, in fact, I'll look it up. Who's the guy's name? Oh, David. Is it Platt? Is that his name? Yeah, John MacArthur says the same exact thing. He says that seventy million or fifty, forty million. And Tim LaHaye says the same thing. I'm sure Tim LaHaye's an historian now. Is Tim LaHaye a historian? No, we don't quote Tim LaHaye. But Tim LaHaye says that the, that the Catholics killed 70 million people. Yeah, there we go. You know, we have documented source accounts for the Holocaust, but we have no documented source accounts for this. I don't think there was even 50 million people in living in... You can go to our website. Uh, estimates of the number killed by the papacy in the Middle Ages and later by UNC professor David A. Plastic, Ph.D. Yeah, what primary sources did he have? does he have? Is he Protestant, by the way? Yeah. He, he, why should I believe him? He's a pro he leans Protestant. But why should I believe him? He leans Protestant. I, mean, I shouldn't even trust him. All right, well, again, that's why I say, who do you think is accurately... <laughs> I'm using your logic against you, though. Well, but the foundation issue, I mean, because really, people can debate about history back and forth. Anybody who studied history long enough knows you're going to have different varying accounts. Just like today, if you watch the president give a speech, you can watch one set of journalists, they will represent that speech one way, and another set of journalists will represent it another way. Same speech, same guy, two different opinions about it. Okay? That's how history works. And you have to figure that out. My problem with the way you're presenting history is you don't take into account the fact that there are people who disagree. I do take into account. You take into account that there are people who disagree. I do take into account. That's why I called you. Because I know you disagree with me, and I'm taking that into account. <laughs> well, it's not just me, Theodore. It's people who lived during the times when you're quoting your source documents okay. and so on. Uh, people who lived through those times saw it differently. I mean, you look at what happened with the uh, massacres, the Irish Catholic massacres against English Protestants in Northern Ireland in the days of Oliver Cromwell. It was reported uh, that between 100 to 150,000 uh, Protestants were murdered by the Irish Catholics. I'm not talking about Protestants, though. That, that, that's like 16th century. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Cathars. Catholic historians who try to say, no, it wasn't really 100,000. Yeah. I'm talking about Cathars, and I'm talking about the heretics who lived in that time period. I'm not talking about Protestants. I never even brought up the Protestants being killed by Catholics. I'm talking about Cathars here. And you said in your show that Cathars were believers. Uh, could you prove to me that the Cathars believe that Jesus is God? 
Well, I would I would say the albigenses in particular, and yes, I, I understand they're one and the same thing, but I prefer the term albigenses simply because that's the one that is used uh, by uh, the reformers. Uh, there's a quote from Archbishop Usher who argues that the charge of Manichaeanism against the uh, Cathars or Albigenses was a false charge, that they were not Manichaeans. Um, it's why I recommend Dr. Ronald Cook's book uh, on the Reformed and Puritan view of Antichrist because he goes over a lot of, in detail, examining primary sources and shows how Rome consistently twisted arguments in order to justify her persecution of these groups. That's what she did. Um, and so that's why I don't trust Rome's history where the Inquisition is concerned. Okay, so why don't you trust St. Ambrose of Milan? Why don't you trust St. Irenaeus when he talks about the Valentinians? But, I mean, I, but you don't even know what the Valentinians believe, so I don't see how you can... Don't, we don't talk about the Valentinians. You don't, but you say that Constantine killed Christians. I'm accountable for things that I don't talk about. But you talked about how Constantine killed Christians. But, but I didn't say Constantine killed Valentinians. All right, but you said he killed Christians, and I'm wondering, okay, where's the primary sources that he said he killed Christians? You brought up the edict. I quoted the edict. You don't want to bring it up. begins with Constantine. That's where that's where it begins. Actually, the first heretic to be killed, the first person to be killed by heresy, was not under was actually under a different time period. It was actually in the fourth century uh, by a guy named Priscillian. Now it's been it's been several years, and I made several other documentaries since Lamp in the Dark. So I'm trying to remember exactly what we said there. But I believe that what we're doing there, if you go back and watch it again, is we are really kind of skimming over large sections of history and saying this began with Constantine, with his edict against heretics, and then it goes on from there and it progressed over time uh, to where Rome became more and more of a persecuting force. But we're not really trying, I don't think that we pinned down Constantine killed this guy, or killed the Valentine. Well, you can't, because you, because you can't prove anything about that. We certainly give the impression that Constantine, we question his conversion, there's no question. We quote Dave Hunt, who believed Constantine... Dave Hunt is not an historian, my friend. I mean, he's not even a historian, I don't see how you can quote him. Well, I, I actually have have a lot of respect for Dave. I know he's passed on, but I actually like Dave's research. So, because you like it doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it doesn't make it true. Doesn't make it true because you like him. Let's look at what primary source accounts does he use? Well, he's not a historian. What primary source accounts does he use? Well, you can find them in his book. I looked at the book. He doesn't provide anything. He doesn't provide anything. Okay. Well, I disagree. I disagree. Um, however, the, the, here's the thing, Theodore, with this, with the history of the church and the history of Rome, uh, you've just got historians who view these things somewhat differently. I tend to go with the history as it was understood by the reformers, by the Puritans, by the pilgrims. I think they were closer to the history, and I generally believe they're representation of it. I'm pretty open about that. I've said so on my program. I don't believe the history according to Rome. Yeah, you've not you've provided no primary source accounts contrary to what the to what the uh, the other primary source accounts say. You just provide Puritan opinions. Have you ever heard of Peter Peter Castanel? Peter Castanel. No. Peter Castanel was the reason why the Albigensian Crusade took place. He was murdered by a man named Raymond VI, who was an Albigensian. Some people say he wasn't, but, I, but if you look at what Pierre writes and all that, he was definitely a sympathizer toward them. And so Peter Castanel excommunicated Raymond VI, and Raymond VI had Peter Castanel murdered by a Cathar knight, Albigensian knight. And they stuck a big lance into his ribs and he died. That was the reason why the war took place. That, that's what that's what provoked Pope Innocent III to say there needs to be a, a crusade because these people were very, were were violent. 
Now, decades before that, there was no crusade. There was simply debates between St. Dominic and others. Uh, you know that as well. And there was uh, teaching, and there was, uh, on the behalf of um, the Catholic Church, uh, evangelism, if you will, toward um, the Albigensian in southern France. But there was no crusade until the Albigensians killed somebody. So they're a they actually... C-A-S-T-E-N-E-A-U? Yeah. He was killed by Raymond the Sixth. Okay. I know you're going to look this up and, and, and try to refute me and all that, but no, no. Here's the thing: if you're if you're bringing up things that I'm not familiar with, obviously I can't talk to you about it unless I have some familiarity. So uh, I can defend the information that we put in my films. I can't necessarily defend details that we don't talk about. I'm just saying that the Cathars, they actually murdered somebody, and that's why the war took place. It took place because they drew first blood. Kind of like how... That Raymond VI was a Cathar. Well, he was either a Cathar or a Cathar sympathizer. Okay. He was definitely a sympathizer, here's, though, here's if anything. The here's the thing. Here's the problem that I, I would have. And, and this, would, this would be the question I'm going to ask you on the program. Uh, do you think that warrants the 100 years of systematic mass murder of the Albigensians, destroying all of their literature, destroying whatever copies of the Bible that they had, uh, and, and nearly wiping them out. In fact, to this day, you have Catholics who tell jokes about the Dominicans and the Jesuits. And they say, well, which is greater, the Dominicans or the Jesuits? And then somebody says, well, the, uh, the Jesuits were given the charge of getting rid of the Protestants, and the Dominicans were supposed to get rid of the Albigensians. Mm -hmm. How many Albigensians do you know? And then that's kind of the joke. Well, you mm -hmm. don't know any Albigensians, but you know a lot of Protestants. So who was more successful? The Dominicans. Uh, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. So you have Catholics who tell these kind of jokes, even to this day, because there was a systematic, I mean, today we would call it genocide, quite frankly. Okay, let me, let me tell you this then. Let me tell you this. In Judges, in the book of Judges, uh, you had one murder that took place uh, of a man, uh, a, a number of people from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm sure you know the story. A man from the tribe of Benjamin, a number of men from the tribe of Benjamin murdered a woman. They raped her to death and she died. Right. And the guy got 12 pieces. You know the story. Well, that, that lot launched a very bloody and horrific war. Tens of thousands of people died. And the uh, Israelites ended up massacring huge amounts of members of the tribe of Benjamin. So if you want to say... They went to fight against that city where this was done. Yeah, yeah, but they massacred tremendous amounts of people. So I'm simply... I'm applying... I'm applying your moral logic to the Bible. If you apply your moral logic to the Bible... Then I can get this. I can come up with the same conclusion. I'm just going to say, well, did that merit them killing all these people, men, women, children, etc.? I can say the same thing about the Canaanites. Well, if I, if the story in the Bible, if I remember correctly, they come forward to hold the men accountable who were guilty of this. And what happened was the Benjamites didn't want to deliver up those men, so they all came out against right. them. That's right. That's right. The elders of Benjamin did not. The leaders did. But I can simply say, well, does that still merit the killing of all the citizens? Why not just kill the elders? Now, I can say the same thing about Raymond VI. When the, 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 the Catholic Church, Pope Innocent III, said, Raymond, you can't be working with these Cathars. And then, they, and then he murders somebody. Uh, then he... Holding somebody accountable. This was about the... the because this was sparked by the debates that were had by Dominic, because Dominic could not prevail against these heretics, and so that was what launched the crusade. That's why the Dominicans became the Inquisitors, mm -hmm. because that was Dominic's order of preachers. That's yeah, and, and, you know that, and you know that he actually had a debate, and St. Dominic had a debate, there's a story, and uh, around 3,000 or so Cathars were uh, baptized because they realized that what their, uh, what their um, Cathar friend was saying wasn't really, didn't really add up. Let's get one thing clear. Because they were, like I said... Were they baptized? And now, now Dominic came up with the rosary. He's the guy who introduced... Actually, the rosary was there in the Eastern Orthodox Church as well, but go ahead. All right, but typically, the, they've got stained glass windows in the Catholic Church showing the Virgin Mary appearing in a vision to Dominic 
and handing him the rosary and telling him to encourage people to pray the rosary. I don't see how, what, 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 what does that have to do with Albigensians and Cathars? Well, because you just talked about Dominic converting a bunch of... Cathars, yeah. What did he convert them to? To Christi Orthodox Christianity, Catholicism. And you believe that praying the rosary is part of... No, 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 see, now you're... Mis now you're no, see, I'm, I'm not going to play this game with you because all these Protestants play this game where I will bring up an historical fact and they will bring up something to do with Catholic theology. I'm not even talking about the Rosary. I'm talking about the Cathars and what happened. I'm not even going to argue. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let you change the subject. We're talking about the well, Cathars. We're talking about the Cathars. Let's talk about the Cathars, please. Do don't inquisit me. No, no, no. Don't inquisit me. You're not the inquisitor in this discussion here. I'm not. I'm, I'm not inquisiting you. We're talking about what you said on the show. The uh, uh, Cathars had their own doctrine. And they, my whole point was that they murdered somebody. And that murder is what commenced the crusade. And the fact that Raymond VI, who was a count, uh, the Count of Toulouse, did not want to do anything. The fact that Bernard, the, who, who was another count, Bernard murdered a knight. And he was a Cathar. And he had deep relations with the Cathars. He took an axe and beheaded a knight. The fact that uh, the Cathars took a priest and beat him up and urinated on him. All of these things. The fact that you had a Cathar named, um, his name was Hugo. Hugo the Cathar went into a church and defecated on the altar. All of these facts, all of these actions are what eventually led up to the Cathar War. You see. So my whole point is that it was a legitimate war because the Cathars were very aggressive and violent. Unlike here in the United States, when you have Muslims who massacre 3,000 Americans, and we vote Obama, at least in those times, they fought for their own. And they say, listen, these Cathars are hostile, they want to destroy our religion, they want to destroy our culture, and they weren't uh, apostolic, as you say. They did not go back to Paul and Jesus. They go back to Manny. They go back to Peter, a man named Peter who went to uh, France and taught this stuff. They didn't go back to the apostles. And if you try to prove they went back to the apostles, you're going to have to, you're gonna have a very difficult time doing that. Because you're going to need to show the primary source accounts evidence to show that. The Albigenses, I would say that that's, that is the history that I know of the Waldenses. The Waldenses claim that they went back to the apostles. Um, yeah, everyone, I'm not talking about the Waldenses. I'm talking about the Cathars here. Okay. Um, and, and the name Cathar, for me, is a more difficult name. I know that the Cathars and the Albigenses are considered to be the same. I'm more inclined to defend the Albigenses, though, uh, because here's the thing, according to the histories that I've read, it's entirely possible that with this whole population of people, you're going to have people who are heretics. Just like if you go to the average church in America, you're going to find people there who hold to Orthodox Christianity, and you're going to find people who have some strange beliefs about things. Uh, just because you can find somebody from a church who holds this weird ideas, because there are people, I mean, I've talked to people who try to justify reincarnation and this kind of thing. And the Cathars believed that, by the way. What's that? The Cathars believed in reincarnation. Well, if, if they believed in dualism, uh, like the Manichaeans and so on, well, certainly that all of this New Age heresy would be part of their beliefs. But my understanding is that where the Albigenses is concerned, uh, the, the accusations against them were false, uh, that they were distorted, and that Rome was guilty of manipulating propaganda against them, uh, kind of like you know Hitler burning down the Reichstag and then blaming it on his political enemies. It was that kind of thing. Um, that is my understanding in general. So obviously the things that you're describing, Theodore, I would agree with you, those things are heresies. Uh, we don't support that kind of thing, and we would defend the beliefs of a people who believe that way. Um, but all that said now, why don't we talk about doing a show? You say you still want to do a show yeah. on this? Yes. Okay. All right. So why don't we talk about doing a show on this maybe tomorrow? 
and uh, we should probably block out an hour to do it because we're going to have a lot of information. And this gives me some idea of what we're going to talk about. And you know what I'm going to talk about, and I know what you're going to talk about. And uh, and so then you know now, Theodore, that the Albigensian Crusade became the Inquisition. This is how the Inquisition began across Europe. Yes, I know that. Okay. So then, do you, if I remember correctly, the radio show that I did, the title of it was, you know, do you really, I, I think I said your dad's name. You were accusing my father, you were accusing us of trying to bring back the Inquisition, which is completely slanderous. Supporting the Inquisition. Supporting yeah, what the Inquisition did. Mm -hmm. Do you support what the Inquisition did? Which Inquisition? Oh, like which Inquisition? Saying. With the, against the Albigensian? Yes, and then against the Albigensians, and then where it went from there in terms of uh, tracking down Bible believers and people Tra who were preaching the gospel and having tracking down Bible believers as though the, the Cathars were just like you. I mean, I, I, again, there's no historical evidence to back that up. There's no historical evidence to show me that they were Bible believers like you, uh, wandering about uh, in the time of Constantine. And you say, again, I'm going to bring this up again, you say that Constantine killed Christians, there's no evidence of that. Not one bit of evidence that Constantine killed Christians. We know that he uh, suppressed certain sects. There's no evidence that he killed any of them either. There's no evidence at all that he killed any of these sects. Because the, the, the first person that was killed for heresy was a guy named Priscillian in the 4th century. That was after Constantine. So, uh, there's no evidence for that. And I read to you the edict... And you don't even know what these sects believed in. You said it's a well-known document. I read it to you. And that's all you have. But again, you don't even know what these groups believed in. And I'm simply telling you that, well, they weren't really Christians. And you keep pushing this idea that Constantine killed Christians, Bible believers. In your documentary, you say this. I don't really keep pushing. I don't know why you say keep pushing this idea. In your documentary, you do. Where we talk about Constantine all the time. Uh, it's more the Church of Rome. Uh, than Constantine as an individual. We just talk about the politicism, the, the, the turning Christianity into a church-state movement where you now have the powers of the state punishing heretics. That begins with Constantine. Prior to that, there's no evidence that I know of that the church would do anything other than separate... Well, because they had no government power, though. But they had no government power. Right. They had no government power. Um, Constantine, however, did have his brother-in-law strangled to death. He had one of his wives killed in a, ba in a bathtub. But that wasn't for religious reasons. The Caesars did stuff like that all the time, but that wasn't for... We're talking about killing heretics. We're talking about inquisitions here. Right, right. But, but the point is, the point is that, that Constantine was a pretty, pretty severe guy. A pretty severe guy. Um, you have to be to be a Caesar. You have to be. There are other things about him that are known historically. Uh, that people question his conversion, whether or not he really converted, that's a fact of history. Uh, but I'll be the first to agree, the Lord knows. Um, I thought you questioned his conversion. What's that? I thought you questioned his conversion. Now you're saying the only the Lord knows? Right, because his conversion has been questioned. It's been argued that he was not baptized until he died. It's also argued that he continued to uh, attend pagan ceremonies and things like that, even while he was calling himself a Christian. But, but, but you see, so yeah. But you say in your documentary that he killed Christians. He was a true convert. But you say in your documentary that, you, that he killed Christians. Well, I don't actually say he killed Christians. I don't remember that line. You said that more Christians were killed under Constantine before his, I mean, uh, after his vision and all that than before. I mean, I can quote you on it, I'm, uh, and I will. Okay, well, well good. Well, then, then good, because I'll go back and review it, and then you review it, and then...